So we are currently in the month of April, which means the spring season is in full swing. Plants are green and they're blooming, as those of us with allergies are very well aware. High school proms are happening every weekend. Students are looking forward to the end of the school year or maybe even graduation. In the church, this is a season of the year when sacraments seem to be happening everywhere. Just from my perspective, the last few weeks have been full of sacraments. I presided at a wedding. We had our two confirmation masses at St. Anthony last week. I was part of a priestly ordination last weekend as well. And next weekend, I get to baptize my newborn grandchild. And over these weeks, of course, St. Anthony is celebrating first Holy Communions of our young ones, as you are all very well aware. Um, so there are almost 50 of you here, I think. Welcome to you and your families and congratulations. Now, considering the readings we heard today and with all of the sacraments in mind, especially the first communions happening this weekend, I, wanted to, I want to discuss three numbers that should be important to us. First, the number one. Second, the number 10. And third, the number 416. So let's start, predictably, with the number one. So, first communicants, today, after today, how many times will you have received the Eucharist? The answer, of course, is one. But remember, this is your first communion. It's not your last. Come back frequently. Now, the number one also refers to how we should view ourselves as a community. That is, we should be unified. Like our one God, the Trinity, is unified, we should also be Nowadays, there are so many reasons for us to be fractured and upset with each other. And if you don't believe me, just check your social media accounts or turn the news on. Even at church, we have reasons to fracture and separate. Today and in recent weeks, it might be upsetting when we have sacraments like First Communion. And that means people have displaced you from your normal seat at Mass. And even little things like that can make us grumpy. However, we should always be looking for ways to unify ourselves. And these first communions we're celebrating today are a great example. Even the word communion is about unity. It's about us coming together. In fact, it's symbolized in our procession to communion. As we walk forward, we get physically closer to each other. We get closer to the altar as well. We feed on the same Christ in the Eucharist. We become one. When you celebrate a baptism, there's a greeting at the beginning that includes these words. Dear parents, your families have experienced great joy at the birth of your children, and the church shares your happiness. This community rejoices with you. For today, the number of those baptized will be in Christ will be increased. And the same is true for today. First communicates and your families will use similar words. Your families are experiencing great joy as your child reaches this milestone and the church shares your happiness. This community rejoices with you for today. The number of those unified at the table of the Lord will be increased. So one is an important number, but today we also consider the number 10. 10 is the number of times we heard the word remain in today's readings. It occurred two times in the second reading and a whopping eight times in the gospel. If a word comes up ten times in Holy Scripture in such a short span, it's important. And the primary message we're given today is that we remain in Christ. What does that mean to you to remain? Think about that. How do you remain in Jesus? Now, to help us understand the answer to that question, Jesus gives us the example of a vine and its branches. Jesus is the vine, and if we remain in him, we're the branches. And like a vine feeds its branches, Jesus feeds us spiritually through prayer, at Mass, and in the Eucharist. But how do you know that you remain in Christ? And Jesus tells us that a branch will bear fruit it's important for us to consider if our lives bear fruit. Think of plants that produce fruit. I don't know, I assume all of us have seen at some point a fruit that grows on a tree or a vine. 
because I'm always amazed by it. It seems like the fruit grows out of nowhere. It's like the insides of the plant are overflowing into this new creation that's much bigger than the branch that's producing it. In the same way, spiritually for us, a weekly commitment to Mass is critical to remaining. But that, that's what inspires a deeper interior life of prayer. And all of us can remain more in Christ through more and better prayer. If we do, our interior life will overflow like a plant. It'll produce fruit that's greater than us. Your life, prayer, and actions will bring others to Christ. There will be an abundance of spiritual gifts. What are the consequences of not remaining in Christ? And Jesus answers this, and it might be scary, but he's not messing around. He tells us that if we don't bear fruit, we'll be taken away. We'll be cut off. We'll be thrown out. We will burn. And brothers and sisters, that's important. The ultimate destiny for all of us, every one of us here, is one of two places, heaven or hell. You remain in Christ and produce fruit, or you're thrown out into the eternally painful separation from him. We must remain in Christ. And to help us all along those lines, I would recommend you pondering the idea of remaining in Christ. Read the gospel for today at home, line by line. There's so much meaning packed in all of it. So finally, let's look at the number 416. And many of you are probably wondering where in the world I got that number. Some of you may have been trying to decode it from the moment I said it. But here's the answer. It's approximately eight years from now for the first communion, until the first communicants are to be confirmed. If all of you first communicants went to Mass once a week and received communion, you will have received communion about 416 times between now and then. Honestly, I hope it's a lot more than that. I hope you make visits to Mass on weekdays. I hope you're committed to what we sang in the psalm today. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Parents, for all parents, when you have young children, this is entirely up to you. Are you bringing your children to Mass every week? because they can't walk here on their own? Are you praying with them every day, both mom and dad? If you don't bring them to Mass, if you don't teach them to pray, are you running a risk that they're not connected to the vine? My hope, the hope of Father Jesse, all our clergy and all the parish, the hope of the Catholic Church is that you all remain deeply committed to Christ. And this calls to mind the line from the same Gospel of John. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Over the next years, all of us should be back at least 416 times to remain by eating the body of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Now, my homily feels like I'm directing it toward the first communicants, and that's special for today. But really, all these words are for all of us. We must all remain in Christ. We must remain attached to the vine. We cannot produce fruit unless we remain in him. If we remain, we're all united in Jesus. We are one. Our challenge as we leave today is to remain in Christ, to seek the paths that produce fruit and not the ones that lead to being thrown into the fire. Come to communion for what it is, a call to remain connected to Christ and also a way for us to be united as one in each other. As Ephesians chapter 4 tells us, we must be one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Because brothers and sisters, the only number that matters in the end is the number one. Let's leave here today dedicated to be united as one with our one God. St. Anthony of Padua. <clears throat>